Hi everyone, let's talk books. And um, actually today we're gonna talk about a variety of different things because I wanna talk about my June favorites. And so I kinda of tried to come up with different categories and um, pick out a favorite in each of those. But let me tell you, this is a kind of spur of the moment video. So it might be all over the place, I don't know. Let's get started. So first off, since this is a book channel, my favorite book of the month, I had a really hard time with this because I did a lot of really good reading this month. Like I read a lot of really good books. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I hadn't had a lot of concentrated time for reading in a long time. And in June, I really did. I had a lot of free time and a lot of, so that I could, I was able to just sit and read a lot. And so the books that I was picking out were books that I had wanted to read in a really long time, books that I knew had gotten really good reviews and that I were basically like five star predictions. So I did a lot of good reading. Um, so I just picked one of those books that I think is the least likely to have gotten a lot of buzz on book two. And that is, spoiler alert, The Hero Dies. In, um, it's by Michael Ostiello and it's a memoir. So it's not, um, it's not fiction, it's based on the story of Michael Ostiello and his partner Kit and basically um, the journey they went on in their relationship uh, to the end when Kit was diagnosed with cancer and passes away within a year of his diagnosis. So um, you know right off the bat, bat that that is going to happen but he does such a really good job of weaving together the story of the diagnosis and what happens to Kit and to him, to their relationship after the diagnosis with the beginning of their love story and with different like little moments within their relationship. Um, it's obviously sad, there's some sad moments, I did cry, um, but it's also really heartfelt and it has some really funny moments. Michael Ostiello is an entertainment, well he used to be an entertainment writer, um, then he was an editor, he runs his own website now, TV Line, I'll leave it down below. But so I followed his writing for a long time. I think I followed him for over a decade, um, and I didn't know a whole lot about his personal life. But so this was a really nice insight into that. But I did know like this is a very emblematic of his writing. He is a really witty, really funny writer on um, like short entertainment articles, and that translated really well into like a long form memoir. I thought that was really, really excellent. So that was definitely one of my favorite books this month. All right, for TV, I don't usually watch a ton of like new television. Um, I do have cable, but I don't know, I just, for a number of years in graduate school, I didn't have cable. And so I just felt like I fell off the radar when it came to TV, I didn't know all the new stuff. Um, so I actually never watched Jane, Jane the Virgin, when it, you know, as, it, as it's aired, I've never watched it. But um, I know it's really good and I've had a lot of people recommend it. So um, in June, I started watching it um, and I have to thank my youngest sister for that, Maricela. She texted me and she was like, oh my God, Cynthia, Jane the Virgin is, is so awesome. You're gonna love it. And so I was like, okay, I've been meaning to watch this show for a long time. Let me start watching it. So I'm still just in season one, no spoilers, please. And it just, like, it grabbed me from the very beginning. Um, I am Latina, I'm Mexican-American, um, and I listen to a lot of Spanish music. In fact, I pretty much, almost exclusively listen to music in Spanish. So in the first episode, when the, uh, the pilot episode, when the soap opera in the background is playing and they play the theme song to the soap opera and it's a Juanes song, I just, I knew that they were getting something really right about uh, Latino culture. And then of course they are. And I've really been loving the way they dress. Agina Rodriguez, she seems like a really cool individual really awesome. I've been follow I started following her on social media and I really love the stuff she's been doing lately. She and the, and I think it's the cast or the show, it was donating Emmy money to send a dreamer to college. They picked a, uh, a dreamer that's going to Stanford, I think. And I just thought that was so like awesome, so gracious and just I love it. I love it a lot. So um, Jane the Virgin is really, really awesome. I've <laughs> really been enjoying it um, and I can't wait to continue uh, watching it. 
in terms of movies. I actually haven't gone to the movies a whole lot in June. Um, I want to go. What did we go see? I went to go see The Avengers, but I think that might have been in May. <laughs> actually, maybe not because we waited forever. My boyfriend and I waited forever to go see it. Um, but uh, then we, we, what else did we see? We saw some other movie. Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, that's how unmemorable uh, the movie theater experience was. Um, but I, I love, I love movies. I, I want to see. I have a long list of movies that are coming out right now that I want to go see. But um, one movie that I forced my boyfriend to sit down and watch in June was The Terminator. He had never seen The Terminator, and I had always said that like one of my my dream date, like my ideal date, is just like. My boyfriend and I ordering pizza, sitting down and watching The Terminator. <laughs> so, so we watched The Terminator in June and that movie, like it's dated. It was made in the 80s, in the mid 80s. It's a dated movie and you watch the effects and some of what they do in the movie and you're like, oh my God, we can do so much better now <laughs> on, in film. Uh, but but it's such a great movie it's kind of uh i love the sci-fi elements of it um i love the kind of um girl power elements there as well it's just it's a really good movie and it has served as inspiration for a lot of things since then right um it the tv show i remember i, I watched there was a tv show in the odds um the terminator the sarah connor chronicles and it called Whatever that was, um, I liked that. I've I have enjoyed the sequels, not some of the more recent ones. They haven't been the best. But anyways, I I went back to the original. It's a really great movie. If you haven't seen it, um, you should. All right. Uh, last thing to talk about is really kind of makeup um, and like beauty products. I have a makeup and beauty uh, channel uh, that is always linked down below if you're interested. But I want to mention a few things just really quick um, because in terms of hair products, I found a spray that is really, really good for those of us with curly hair or if you have wavy hair. I think this spray is really good and it's the Way um, Hair Care Wave Spray spray undulation. This is just a little mini uh, that I'd gotten from like the travel section. Um, so I've already used up a lot of it because I have a ton, I have long curly hair. So I have a lot of hair. So I use a ton of product when my hair is this long. So I don't know how cost effective it'll be for me to buy, but I will be buying the full size um, when I am done. I have another mini waiting for me. So once I'm done with those, I'm gonna buy the full size. This is really good. I also um, am trying their like leave-in conditioner. Also really, really good. So I've really been enjoying whey um, hair products. Um, a couple of other things real quick. Lipstick, the, my go-to lipstick lately has been this by Clinique. I've really been in a kick of like rotating through my beauty products, especially my lipstick. And in the summer, I like to pull out a lot of corals and this one's really good. Um, so this is what the swatch looks like. I don't have it on my lips right now, of course, um, but it's, it's just, it's been perfect with a lot of different looks. The way this looks on my lips comes off like a, with a little bit of a bark in it. I don't know. There's like a little bit of pink in it. Um, or at least I think my lip color, my natural lip color brings out a little bit of pink in, um, in this coral color. It's mostly coral though. It comes off as coral, but there's like a little something interesting in there that I really have been in enjoying. Um, so I really like that. Oh, name. What is the hell is this? This is the Clinique um, Clinique Lip Color and Primer in the color 06 Poppy Pop. There it is. And last, last beauty product is this um, Too Faced Cosmetics Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I've been trying out a bunch of setting powders and this one was quite a surprise because although I had gotten a lot of really good reviews on on YouTube and all over the beauty community, I hadn't really tried it. And I finally started using it consistently in June and it does smell like peach, but it has a really nice contraption. So it doesn't like, it's loose powder that's not gonna fly everywhere. You have a little bit more control over it. And it does 
uh, it provides some light mattifying like it's not going to make your face look super matte it's just basically going to control the oils and so it I feel like it's even more satin than matte uh, on the face because it's not as mattifying as some of my other mattifying products but it still controls the oils it gives a really nice finish to the face and if you're into setting powders um, and you haven't tried this one I highly suggest you give it a shot that you get either a mini travel size which usually you know those mini products of this kind of makeup last a long time are um, or something like that because I think it's worthwhile to try if you like setting powder all right I think that is it uh, for me it's been a kind of um, I was going to say it's been a low-key uh, month, but it hasn't been that low-key. I went to Vegas, so Vegas would actually be another favorite in June. I really, uh, I'm not a Vegas person because one, I don't, I'm not a party person, so I don't like going into clubs. I'm not much of a drinker, like I drink here and there, but I like, like I'm not like, yeah, let's go to the bar and get drinks. Like, no, that's not me. Um... I'm not a gambler, <laughs> so what the hell was I doing in Vegas? Well, my boyfriend, um, like, he does like to gamble, and so we'd never been to Vegas together, so we went to Vegas uh, together for the first time in June, and it was fun, it was fun. We didn't go see any of the big shows, but we went to see, like, a murder mystery dinner show. That was a lot of fun. Um, he came along for some shopping with me. That was also a whole lot of fun. I love visiting new places with him. And he's such a trooper about walking into bookstores and makeup stores with me. Um, so, uh, so that was really fun. Anyways, Vegas was a lot of fun in a kind of non-crazy way. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this was the first time that he's gone and he's had this kind of experience too. So it was really nice to kind of get away uh, for just a couple of nights. We weren't there that long, uh, but it was uh, it was fun. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you've been loving in June. Um, if you make these videos, let me know down below so I can go check them out. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.